Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. The loan company Vivus illegally collected data and photos of Polish customers. At the time, it was controlled by a Russian oligarch who, after Russia's attack on Ukraine, got rid of his ties to the company and changed his citizenship to Ukrainian. Among others, Marek Bosak, brother of Krzysztof Bosak, one of the leaders of the Confederation political party, had a manager position at Vivus. The Office of Competition and Consumer Protection began taking an interest in Vivus as early as 2016, when it began offering loans through so-called cash ATMs. In addition, in order to receive an information form about the rules of the loan, you had to provide not only your data, but also a photo of your face. In September 2021, Tomasz Hrustny, president of the OCCP, ruled that Vivus violated the collective interests of consumers by serving customers through cash machines, requiring the provision of of inadequate and redundant information. However, he did not impose a penalty on the company, as it managed to withdraw from providing loans for the machine in 2017. On Monday, the decision of the president of the UOKK was upheld by the Court of Competition and Consumer Protection. Vivus also required inadequate and redundant information from the consumer to be made available on the so-called cash machine, phone number, address, scan of identity card, and a photo of one's face. Vivus Finance posted a profit of 23 million zwolte at the end of 2020, while the entire lending industry recorded substantial losses. Despite good financial results, its main shareholder, Oleg Boyko, signed a sale agreement in Riga on April 14, 2022, fearing European sanctions. Investigative journalist Piotr Nistor points out that the oligarch is directly linked to the Kremlin's power structures. Oleg Boyko is a man who is associated with the Kremlin, with Vladimir Putin, a man who made a fortune in Russian banking then, when Boris Yeltsin was still president. This is a person who was put on the Australian sanctions list in connection with the Russian attack on Ukraine. While the company was owned by Oleg Boyko, its communications director was Marek Bosak, privately the brother of Krzysztof Bosak, one of the leaders of the Confederation. We are still getting into those connections that may be very significant, and it is now the role of the internal security agency to verify whether those connections have any significance. According to politicians and publicists, it is disturbing that Marek Bosak has such close ties with a Russian oligarch. Putin preparing for the invasion of Ukraine undoubtedly strengthened his agency in various areas. And today we cannot exclude anything, including the activities of the company Vivus, may have such signs. This case shows as clearly as possible that some of the Confederation's politicians are linked to the Kremlin, not only in the programmatic sphere, anti-EU and anti-Ukraine rhetoric, but also in the context of a network of economic ties. And Mr. Bosak probably probably fits into this network of ties. The Vivus company still operates in the Polish market under the name Sunli. We remember how before the elections, probably to parliament, he backed off, saying he had nothing to do with it anymore. And all indications are that he was hidden away. Of course, one is not responsible for one's brother, but someone tried to mislead the public that he was not there. And he was back there. Between 2012 and 2020, Krzysztof Bosak had no official source of income. According to his own statement, his income at the time was to be derived from his work on the staff of the Confederation and from his work for the MP's office, Robert Winnicki. I think that the presence of Krzysztof Bosak's brother there, and he has been there for many, many years, because I will remind you, almost since 2012, this can cause concern and should cause interest in the secret services of Poland, because it is no coincidence that it is often not an active politician who is rewarded, but someone from his family. According to the National Court Register, there are nearly 8,000 companies in Poland in which at least one of the shareholders is a Russian company or an individual who is a Russian citizen. The law and justice government is calling for the possibility of confiscating the assets of individuals who support Russia's activities and taxing companies that have not withdrawn from the market there. But this requires a constitutional amendment. The media attack on St. John Paul II is part of a broader campaign to completely discredit the Polish Pope. Gazeta Polska journalists point out that for years there has been a massive attack on all symbols associated with St. John Paul II, and this includes the song Barka. 
A number of materials can be found on the internet that make mocking use of symbolism associated with St. John Paul II, such as the Pope's favorite song, Barca. Graphics are created attributing pedophilic tendencies to the Pope. Even the exact time of the Pope's death is mocked, 9.37 p.m. Such an extensive campaign of hatred and discredit is aimed at discouraging the younger generation from our great countryman. And these are different methods. On the one hand, trying to ridicule the Pope, make him out to be an old man who enjoyed cream cake. On the other hand, making such a serious moral attack as the popular Polish media material, which was trying to discredit the Pope. The broadcast of the report Franciscan III stirred up public opinion. The material alleged that the Pope, while still a cardinal, covered up pedophilia in the Archdiocese of Kraków. The TV station relied on documents of the security service of the People's Republic of Poland. The material used a number of suppositions on the basis of which conclusions were drawn. This total lie based on a lack of logical thinking, but also lack of foundation, unfortunately led to the conclusion that Wojtyła as cardinal was a criminal. The pontificate of St. John Paul II was special because of the Pope's immense involvement in the life of the Church around the world. The Holy Father made more than 100 foreign pilgrimages and initiated World Youth Day, in which he saw the future of the Church. He was not afraid to address difficult topics. In his teaching, he always stood up for the sanctity of life and the family. The Pope was not attuned to trends. He didn't want to follow the world in the sense that he didn't want to please the world. He just had something concrete to convey. He wanted to talk about human dignity, the dignity of marriage and family. This was his very personal contribution, which after all he brought from Kraków, the love for life. Several generations of Poles and Christians around the world have been raised on his teaching. Musician and composer Dariusz Maleo Malejonek owes his conversion to the Pope. We let ourselves take away such a treasure as his teaching or message. I was from that generation of the World Youth Days that kind of set sail, swim against the current. Everyone has their own Westerplatte. These are the things that young people were captivated by. In defense of the Pope's good name, the first National Papal March will pass through the streets of Warsaw this Sunday. Everyone is invited. This is a grassroots initiative, so we should all attend. Anyone who is close to John Paul II, who is close to his teachings, who would like to think about what freedom, self-government, responsibility means, then quoting the title of John Paul II's book, to all these people we are just saying, get up and let's go. The Papal March will set off at 11 a.m. from the Domovsky Roundabout in Warsaw and then proceed to the Archcathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist on Świętojańska Street, where it will end with a mass at 12.30 p.m. The recommendation of the International Olympic Committee that Russian and Belarusian athletes compete as neutrals is shameful, Poland's Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki said earlier today, adding that Poland would build a coalition to demand its reversal. We here will protest very strongly against this because it is a step towards getting used to and getting others used to this cruel war that Russia has started against Ukraine and therefore also against the whole free world. We certainly will not withdraw our athletes on our own, but we will try to build a coalition of countries. And that's what I instructed Sports Minister Bortnichuk to demand together with a strong voice from the International Olympic Committee to withdraw this very wrong and bad decision. The International Olympic Committee's decision was also criticized by Estonia. But while the Polish prime minister said Poland would look to build a coalition of countries to form a potential boycott, Estonia's culture minister, Hatman, said Estonia was not currently talking about a boycott, but was continuing to work to have Russian and Belarusian athletes excluded from competitions. Some time ago, we had really 30 countries who said that uh, it's not OK, you should think about this, that uh, uh, war is not uh, over and we shouldn't uh, change the statements what we had done already earlier. So yes, right now we are very disappointed. We don't see the possibility to take part. Whatever, if it's in the Russian or Belarusian flag or it's a neutral flag, we don't see that they can uh, take at all part of these competitions. This is something what the sport organizations decide and our Olympic Committee. So we don't speculate right now with the boycott because, of course, we want that our sport people would have the peace to also prepare the Olympic Games. It's not against the people. It's uh, the old aim is to stop the war right now in Ukraine. And we have to really 
give all our input uh, that this would uh, this would happen. On Tuesday, March 28th, the International Olympic Committee issued recommendations for the gradual return to international competitions for Russian and Belarusian athletes as neutrals, with President Thomas Bach saying their participation works despite the war in Ukraine. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a wonderful evening.